Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special treat today. I've been working on putting this together for a few years now, and this is the day we got a wonderful guest on the Hammond Cash Show on KYOU Radio, one of my all-time favorite musicians and teachers and world travelers and a native of Chicago, Illinois. I'm sitting here with Junior Mance. How are you doing today, Junior? Fine. So far, I've only been up a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. well, it's early in the world of jazz musicians. We have to push it back a little bit, but thanks for coming out while the daylight is still out. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's great to see you. Thank you. Likewise. Yeah. It's great to so, see Junior, you, you have such a, a wonderful, rich history of playing, and you started uh, literally uh, uh, when you were probably so young you couldn't even reach the pedals on the piano, right? <laughs> that's no joke, that's true. I started when I was five years old. Wow, Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, when you when you began, were, were you taking formal lessons or just uh, nope. getting into it? My father played for his own enjoyment. Mm -hmm. He didn't never played professionally, but uh, that's where we always had a piano in the house, you know, because he loved piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, he could have been professional, but I don't know, back in those days, see, I was born in 1928, wow. <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't know, I don't think he had the uh, heart to become a professional, you know, but he just enjoyed playing. Mm -hmm. He could play stride, you know, uh, stride piano, like uh, his favorites were people like James P. Johnson, uh, Earl Hines especially, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. And uh, so when he was home, he was a clothes presser by day, you know. Uh -huh. and so I was just always fooling around on the piano, reaching up. I couldn't, couldn't uh, even climb up on the stool yet. Uh -huh. But I'd just stand there, reach up like that with the keyboard, about nose level, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and do it like that with the keys. Wow. And he came home early one day, and I didn't hear him come in the house. And he heard, he says he heard the piano going, and. By the time he caught me doing that, I was playing melodies, you know, like just single note melodies. And uh, he stood in the doorway very quietly, you know, and this is the story I got from him like later, years later, you know. He says he stood there for an hour and I was doing it, you wow. know. And then he made some kind of move and I heard, and I says, oh my goodness. Yeah, because you know, when you're young, you don't play with anything that belongs to your mother or father, you know, in the house when you're five years old, you know. So I turned around quickly and I said, Dad, Dad, can I take piano lessons? And it floored him. He said, what? What five-year-old in their right mind asked the parents, can they take music lessons? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, that's uh, beautiful because... But, but he did, you know. You, well, you knew what you wanted to do at that young age and that's, I guess I did. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that's, a, that's fantastic. Cause so many people don't find it till later in life, you know. So you, 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 you got hold of the music early, and and Chicago was was a lively place for music at that time. Uh, it was. My, yeah. I'm I'm born in Chicago myself. Oh yeah. Know? And my mom went to uh, Hyde Park Academy with um, Mel Torme and, and yeah, uh, Steve well, Allen. See, I grew up in Evanston. Ah. Bob Cranshaw and I, we both grew up in oh, Evanston. Oh, that's where Bob is from. Yeah. 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 Well, there was sure some wonderful music coming out of Chicago at the time. So. Oh yeah. Well, that's where I, I learned all about it in Chicago. Right. So I you began it's... playing with combos uh, pr pretty early on, mm -hmm. and um, you know, of course, uh, everybody knows that uh, you're on records with uh, the great Gene Ammons and and one of my all-time favorites. Julian Cannonball Adderley, you know, you were in a, in, actually in his first organized group, and and um, I was in the army. You, you were in the Cannonball. army with him in in, yeah. in Kentucky. Yeah, I see. And that, yeah. Wow. Well, he he's one of my all-time favorites. I mean, I, too. I mean, Cannon, he besides uh, mastering a, the playing of bebop, you know, he had his own thing and. One of my favorite aspects of uh, Cannonball was his his oratory between the tunes, you oh. know, and how he would set the tunes up and put everybody in the right mood, you know. And I, but I you know that was a natural thing. That. Cannonball could discuss any subject with anybody, no matter what 
their profession or career was, you know. I've seen him do whole uh, discussions with uh, congressmen and people like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just, well, he was a school teacher also. I see. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I, I, He came I from a family of teachers. Teacher, His mother right. and father were both teachers. And uh, Counterpaul uh, taught at uh, Florida A&M. You know, they were where he graduated from also. Well, he, he taught all the audiences. And, uh, yeah. He, one of my very first favorite concerts I ever saw was the Cannonball Adderley Quintet, mm -hmm. you know, with with Nat on the band and, and uh, Joe Zavano. And, right, yeah. Um, of course, they had that, that huge smash hit that, that, that Joe wrote, Mercy, Mercy. Mercy, Mercy, yeah. Became mm -hmm. really great. I mean, yeah, you're, that, you're, you're a composer in your own right, too, so you've been, been uh, writing tunes. And, and you, well, two or three tunes. You can, you can write a blues composer. with a drop of a hat. I know that. <laughs> you know? And you've been playing with one of my, my favorite drummers and one of my favorite people here in New York, and that's Jackie Williams. You know? Oh, yeah, Jackie's been I love with Jackie, me about you know? 20 years. Yeah. yeah. He's great, and, yeah. and, um, and he done on bass. He's, he's been he doing a opera, nice, yeah. nice job. He's, very, he's been with me about f almost five years now. Wow. He does a nice yeah, job. Yeah, he came to uh, the States in 82. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, he's one of the best bass players I've ever had. Ever hired. Very solid. He's taking care of the bottom end very yeah, nicely, you that's know. That's right, yeah. And, you know, so Junior, we were just talking before we turned on the microphone about um, this great school that you've been involved in from the very beginning and uh, our mutual friend who we both miss very much, and that's. Arnie Lawrence and Arnie and, and Chico uh, uh, got this thing going uh, about what 22 years ago or something like that. Or about, more, yeah, maybe yeah. more than that, right? No, no. At the I, new school, I, I, I was one of the, I was one of the first. You, you were yeah, one of the very first. First, yeah, yeah, So you, you're, you're still teaching there, so right just I'm around the corner, teaching, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And um, just right down the street. Yeah, I miss yeah. I miss Arnie and you know so many yeah, musicians. I mean, you know Arnie, uh, he did some very powerful things and in a very very uh, easy and casual <laughs> kind of approach to things you know yeah well Arnie had his own way of doing things and people used to say that you're nuts but he would come out land on his feet every time yeah yeah like he uh, Chico was a little bit like that Chico wasn't uh, but they were both nuts in their own a very positive way, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, they they got the job done. Yeah. In fact, Chico was awarded a, a honorary PhD last year. Right, and yeah. and Chico got the NEA Jazz Masters Award about three or four years oh, ago. Yeah, that was and you that, you were yeah. induct you were inducted in 1997 into the International Jazz Hall of Fame. So, congratulations on that, Junior. <laughs> That's beautiful. Right? Thank you. So your your music has been immortalized, and you you sound great. I just heard you the other day at that local 802, and I really enjoyed hearing you play solo piano at our Christmas party at the 802. Um, and uh, it's real, always a, a real treat to hear you sit down and play solo. But you know you've been playing in in combos for many years. I was playing trio at the Christmas party. Though. Oh yeah, that's right. But uh, um, yeah. But I've solo heard, is I've heard something you play new solo. that I've been getting into, yeah. and I'm, begin I'm beginning to like it a lot. Right. I was always wondering why it took you so long to really debut as a solo pianist. You know, when well, because you did that. There's a lot of reasons other than just the music for mm -hmm. that. You know, I like playing with the trio. Mm -hmm. I like playing with the duo, and uh, I've also formed a, a quintet that I'm working with. I like to, I like to hear it all. Yeah. Because uh, I played, you know, with a trio for so many years. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, after a while, there's only uh, one sound you can get out of bass, piano, and drums. 